I've been burned before. I trusted, I talked, I opened up, I got honest. And now I've paid the price. Guess what? I'm not going there anymore. I'm not talking to anybody. I'm not telling anybody any secrets. I'm not sharing any part of my heart. Come on, let's all pray together. Okay, I'll pray, but you're not hearing what I'm saying. Any personal prayers that I got to pray, I pray alone. And that's why we live on the surface. That's why it's so much more comfortable to talk about the football game or the basketball game or the fishing or the hunting or, or something else because we're not going to get all down there in that sensitive, tender areas of our hearts because we already trusted somebody before and they used it against us and we're still devastated by the effects. But guess what? You can't get delivered until you can open up your mouth and get some of this stuff out of you. And you can't move on until you can hear from God. And so what happens is, is these demon spirits have locked people up where they are deaf and they are dumb. No wonder we can't just come up and walk up to them and do the same old thing that we've always done and hope to be effective. I'm going to have to walk in revelation. I'm going to have to say, I know exactly what's going on in your life. You listen to me. God has already opened you up. And I'm not going to have you tell me. I'm going to tell you what's going on inside of you to let you know that God still knows where you are. He knows that you've been hurt. And all of this is nothing but a counterfeit but I'm going to show you that the real still exists. When Jesus came down from the mountain, he said, oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. Get him in my presence. And now we'll see how the reaction is. Hallelujah. What we see in the valley is a composite of tradition in Jezebel. It is anti-Christ. We have Christ. And then we have anti-Christ. The spirit of anti-Christ then is made up of a masculine and a feminine face. One is tradition and one is Jezebel. And the reaction. That's why you see people. And it's amazing how people that can be. So on one extreme over here can suddenly shift and go to one extreme over here on the other. Well, it's just the same spirit. They just switch directions. And this is the complication of why people don't want to hear, they don't want to speak. Because the symbols that used to reflect the nature of God are now being used in the name of God for something totally different. The Bible says the Antichrist will destroy many through peace. It's not through war. Oh, no, no. These are peacekeepers we're sending over there. We're going to use all of these religious terms. You know, like turn the other cheek with the terrorists. Because we're a Christian nation. And they use all of these things about loving everybody. Because if we love everybody like Jesus loves us, well then, you know, we can't even preach. It's a hate crime to talk against abominations that are in the scripture and so they're using this is the kind of terminal and what happens is is that we come into a climate in this generation that is faithless and perverse faithlessness is the result of tradition and perversity is the is the result of Jezebel and the only people that have any effect on this are the ones that have been in the mountain Everybody else is frustrated, walking around saying, I can't understand this, I can't understand this. Now, 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 here's the revelation. Are you ready? Here's the best part of the message. All that was just foundation, okay? I need five minutes to, to finish this, and then we're going to have a tear down Holy Ghost time in just a moment. Are you ready for this? I walked for years with this knowledge, trying to figure out all of this, understand all of this, and parse it, and I taught about it, and I preached about it in different segments of these scriptures. I've been trying to put it all together, and it's been, it's, been, it's been a long journey for me of study and research. But I asked God a question a few months ago that summarized it all and put it all into perspective. And here it is. I said, okay, God, I understand that what we're dealing with in our generation, here at the end of days, I understand what's in the culture now. I, I know why they are the way they are. I know why they're deaf and they're dumb. I know why they're faithless and perverse. I have that. 
But how do I know that I have fasted and prayed, that I've been up in the mountain with you long enough, that the revelation that I have is able to overcome this? I can diagnose it now, but how do I have authority over it? And how do I live and operate and minister effectively in it? That's what I want to know. How do you know when you've conquered it? And the Lord spoke it back to me. And He said, this is how you'll know when you have defeated it. When they will not listen to anybody else, but they'll listen to you. And when they will not talk to anybody else, they'll talk to you. What God wants is for us to have such a difference that there's such a flow of the nature of Christ that there is such a manifestation of who Jesus is that it is undeniable. And they say, you know what? I don't know why I'm telling you all this. I don't ever talk about this stuff. But you know, for some reason, I feel something coming from you that it's okay. I've been burned so many times. But for some reason, I just feel like I'm supposed to tell you what's going on in my life. That's how you know that you've won. And for some reason, they can't explain it. You know what? I don't like preachers. I don't like people that go to church. I don't like all those religious folk. I don't want to talk to them. But there's something about it that when you talk to me, when you start speaking to me, I feel something. And you know what? I... I, I, I think you really know where I'm at. I think you've really got... Can we talk a little bit more? I want to hear a little bit more about what you're saying to me right now. This is what God has designed for the end of the age. That we will walk in such revelation and manifest such the nature of Christ that people will hear us when they won't hear anybody else. And they will talk to us when they won't talk to anybody else. Now I realize the wisdom of God. God just let the devil do the greatest favor he could have ever done for the church. He made everybody else in the world mute. They won't hear any other religion. They won't hear any other church. They won't hear anybody except the people that are really hearing, they're really speaking God. Thank you, devil. I really appreciate that. I don't have to worry about it now. I'm the only one they'll hear. I'm the only one they'll dial in on. Hey, he understands. He's got it. God is really speaking through. Hey, I want to hear that guy. Thank you. Thank you, devil. I really thank you so much. You just took care of all of our competition. <laughs> and they're tired of talking to psychotherapists they're tired of talking to counselors you know what they're tired of trusting 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 and getting and getting nowhere thank you thank you I really appreciate that the only people they'll talk to is us what a gift would you thank you thank your heavenly father right now for what he's doing would you lift your hands all over this building in Jesus name thank you God they're going to hear, and they're going to speak. They're going to get it out. He listened to Jesus when he wouldn't listen to anybody else. And he told stuff to Jesus he didn't tell anybody else. I believe, help my unbelief. He got honest with Jesus and said, really, the root of the matter is, it's not my boy, it's me. And what God whispered in my ear today, he said, this is a group of men. And he said, and what is at the root of the generation is a problem with fathers and sons. It was a breakdown. And everybody was trying.